I'm Luke, and with my partner Spencer, we looked into and tested our 2018 Hyundai Tucson's engine coolant temperature sensor, the intake air temperature sensor, and the throttle position sensors to figure out how each component functioned and if they functioned correctly. The engine coolant temperature sensor uses a variable resistor that allows the PCM to determine the engine's temperature based on the voltage reading it receives from the sensor. The PCM translates the given voltage to a temperature for the driver. This information is important to the PCM for determining the amount of fuel needed on startup. Cold air is denser and the engine requires more fuel to maintain a proper air fuel ratio. The ECT sensor that the Tucson is equipped with is a negative temperature coefficient type sensor. The sensor's resistance is opposite in relation to heat. This means that as the engine's coolant temperature increases, the sensor's resistance decreases. The ECT sensor also functions only as a single range system, as shown by the graph. There also was never a spike in voltage when we tested the voltage drop across the ECT sensor, proving that it was a single range system. The vehicle's IET sensor functions similarly to the ECT sensor. It is also an NCT sensor and sends voltage readings to the PCM. The temperature of the air entering the engine is also important for the PCM's determining of fuel ratio. The sensor is less important than the ECT, and the ECT can even be used as a backup for the IAT. Both sensors are single range sensors. This can be observed in the graph by the steady decrease in resistance as the temperature increases. There is no secondary resistance slash voltage spike. The throttle position sensors or TP sensors, use potentiometers that vary the resistance depending on the throttle position, therefore allowing the ECU to detect changes in voltage and more accurately control the engine. As stated, the Hyundai uses two throttle position sensors, throttle position sensor 1 being a positive coefficient and throttle position sensor 2 being a negative coefficient sensor. To practice testing and to see if the data all data had on the voltage drops matched the findings, we decided to do a voltage drop test. We started by finding the service information so we knew which wires to probe on the connector. We also installed a scan tool on the vehicle to make sure that our findings matched what was being read by the ECU. First, we probed throttle position sensor number one. As you can see, the more Spencer pushed down on the throttle, the higher voltage we were reading on the multimeter. The multimeter and scan tool were reading pretty much the exact same volts as well, which meant that we were probing the right wire and that the throttle position sensor was communicating with the ECU. We were also getting readings that were very close in voltage to the readings that the graph had shown on all data. At wide open throttle, we were reading 4.2 volts on the multimeter, which was very close to what the graph said, which was 4.41 volts for wide open throttle. We repeated this process with throttle position sensor number two. However, this time we were looking for a decrease in voltage as it was a negative correlation sensor. This sensor did decrease in voltage as it was supposed to, as well as being very similar to the scan tool's voltage. Once again, the voltage at wide open throttle was close to the voltage provided for us by the graph from all data, with the multimeter reading 0.8 volts and the graph showing that it should be 0.59 volts at wide open throttle. Because the Hyundai didn't actually have a fault, we decided to create a fault of our own and see how it affected the car did this by back probing throttle position sensor 2's signal wire with a pin and doing the exact same thing to the ground wire on the connector. We then touched both pins together, effectively creating a short to ground in throttle position sensor number 2. As predicted, this immediately set off a check engine light 
and would not allow the RPMs to increase that fast. In the video, it was at wide open throttle the entire time, and you can see as it struggles to gain any RPM, especially after 4000. This is what was seen on the scan tool as we were testing at wide open throttle. As you can see, the voltage on throttle position sensor number 2 does not move, which automatically triggered a low voltage fault code, which can be seen here. Obviously, the code that it threw was a low voltage to throttle position sensor number 2. After getting rid of the fault and removing the pins, you can see that the car revs up perfectly fine now and the ECU is getting correct input from both throttle position sensors. All we have to do now is go in with the scan tool and clear the code.